Crazy Brave, step number one, spark. A flicker turns into a fire. An angry emotion grows into rage. A happy thought evolves upward into joy. Pay attention to the spark of songwriting inspiration as it arrives on your doorstep. It contains a bigger, more expanded idea within it. The Moonlight Prayer As an artist, my intuition is strong. Today I will trust that if I get a hunch about something, I will honor it as more than a passing thought. Under moonlight, in the quiet parts of my soul, I will be aware of new artistic ideas and thoughts as they rise to the surface. Today, I will listen, trust, and answer the call of my own intuition. The Intro Whispers of Inspiration Music is such a powerful thing that even a short, recognizable intro from a song we loved many years ago has the capability to instantly change our mood and connect us to a past relationship or a memory. First impressions are everything. Here's how to make yours powerful, too. Elements of the intro. Typically, the intro does not have lyrical content. It uses any combination of musical cues, such as rhythm, melody, and harmony, to communicate a mood and texture. It should create a quick flow of musical and emotional anticipation as it pulls the listener into a brand new experience. Keep it short, no more than two or four measures, and no more than 14 seconds for pop usage. If you get stuck here, try pulling musical or lyrical elements from the chorus or verse once you have them written. The song that showed up before the people did. Every song has a beginning. It was one of those hot summer afternoons in Southern California when I pulled up to a bank's drive through ATM. As I waited my turn behind two other cars, a strong, beautiful melody popped into my head. Working on original music was a regular activity for me, and on any given day, it was quite normal to have a number of melodies and lyrics dancing around in my consciousness. I was on a mission. For the past year, I had been working hard on crafting songs for my first album, and I had strong deadlines to meet and good money I had spent on this lifelong dream of making an album of original material. I am like most songwriters, spending days and months beating away at combinations of melodies and piecing together strings of thoughts that, in the final analysis, will hopefully make sense to someone other than me. Upon pulling up to the ATM, I began to automatically put words to this new haunting melody. It won't be long till I'm gone, I sang out loud as I put my bank card in the slot. The rest of the lyric went something like, Turn the water into wine, say my name inside the forest, deliver me a sign. That's weird, I thought, a song about suicide? Despite the odd subject matter, I immediately recognized that to have melody and lyric flow so effortlessly was highly unusual. I repeatedly hummed this new melody so that I wouldn't forget the bones of the song and then pulled into a parking space to write down the words that so quickly flowed. For the next month or so, the suicide song would not leave me alone. It was stuck on repeat in my head while I was shopping in the grocery store, while I was doing laundry, and particularly while I was driving in the car. When songs want to be worked on, they can be annoying but in a good way, like a two-year-old kid pulling at your shirt tails and asking for more candy every five minutes. I knew I didn't want a song about suicide on my album, and so I chalked up my songwriting annoyance as another example of my crazy brain working overtime. That is, until the unbelievable happened. I got a call today from a screenwriter, my music producer said one day, while we were finishing up a session. I was intrigued. Really? What about? They've just finished editing a short movie and are looking for some music. They are coming by today because they're in a hurry to finish the project. I would love to be there if that's okay, I said. Little did my producer know that I adore movies. In fact, out of sheer passion for the subject, I had taken screenwriting classes at UCLA and read a bunch of books on the craft. I even had several unfinished screenplays sitting on my bookshelf at home. Several hours later, when the director and screenwriter slash actress for the film showed up, quick niceties were exchanged, and we got down to business pretty quick. 
They popped the movie into the player, and we sat back to watch. The first image on screen was a close-up of a lit candle. From there, the camera began to slowly pan around a disheveled bedroom, and eventually it landed on the image of a girl laying in bed, pouring water into a cup and taking a handful of pills. The first thing we need is a song over this scene, the director said. She's committing suicide. After a long pause, I started laughing. Silence fell over the room, and I got the feeling that they were trying to size up the emotional stability of this crazy person they had just met who, for some reason, was laughing at the idea of a person committing suicide. I already wrote the song for this, I said through my chuckles. I couldn't help but feel weirdly happy, and I must have smiled like the Cheshire cat for the rest of the meeting. When they left, my producer and I had a quick huddle about the opportunity. They don't have any money for the use of our music, and I'm not sure I want to do the job without being paid, my producer began. But you don't understand. I wrote the song before the people showed up. How is that possible? Don't you think that's remarkable? Maybe even miraculous? Although he wasn't impressed with my little miracle story, we decided to record the song anyway. At 1 a.m. the next day, we were recording the song in a studio with just piano and vocal. Exhausted from our busy lives and dreading the into the wee hours of the morning recording session, we joked that it was a good thing the song was about suicide because I sounded half dead while singing it. That little piece of music fit over the opening scene like a glove. Even the lyric, turn the water into wine, landed exactly over the moment when the character poured the water into the cup before she swallowed a handful of pills. The music didn't have to be edited one bit. It played cleanly over the images as if the song had been written especially for the scene, which of course it had. The movie editor called the next day to thank us personally, wondering how we had managed to crank out such a perfect song so quickly. The song entitled It Won't Be Long went on to play in the short film Details on several cable channels, and it had other multiple placements on TV and film. Over time, that little song went on to earn a nice amount of royalties. Years later, as I reflect on this story, I am still astonished at how it happened. How did these events collide to create a back-to-back series of synchronistic events? How did I hear a new melody almost in its entirety before it was needed for a specific purpose? How was I able to pluck out of thin air a song designed for a movie I had never seen? The short answer is, drumroll please, Love. Imagine that a net surrounds the world, not a virtual internet, but a spiritual one. Imagine that this net is layered over billions and trillions of other nets that crisscross the atmosphere stretching from the earth to the heavens. This universal net is comprised of a countless registry of thoughts, feelings, and experiences that have been generated by everyone in the world since the beginning of time. This accumulated information, formed for our benefit and usage, is constantly collected, sorted, multiplied, sifted, and organized in the most efficient card catalog in the biggest library ever created. The number one governing principle of the net is love, with capitals L-O-V-E. Spiritual characteristics of unconditional love, like kindness, patience, sacredness, caring, empathy, sympathy, tenderness, healing, joy, and oneness are built into the net. The net's primary function is to spread and connect love everywhere, which you can imagine is a fairly large job. It is busy attending to its job 24-7 in a giant reciprocal turntable of net love, responding to conscious and unconscious prayers. All desires, dreams, and wishes are imprinted into net love, and when we send up a request, it listens and responds. Connecting with the wisdom of the net is instinctual, fairly simple, and natural for all human beings. How the net connects to us, however, is a very interesting question. The net has access to every physical thing, and its loving job is to respond to our requests. It can use anything in the world to send us an answer. It can use a friend, an enemy, a beloved song, a scene from a movie, a televangelist talking on TV in the middle of the night— or the synchronicity of a beautiful pink rose given to you by someone who didn't know that your grandma, who just passed away, loved pink roses. The concept of net love is now a matter of deepening scientific study in the field of quantum physics, and it gives us a glimpse into understanding synchronistic events, 
oneness, time travel, and miracles. Just as scientists eventually proved the nature of gravity, despite the fact the man had long ago figured out there is some sort of force keeping us glued to the ground, quantum physics is now offering explainable theories for unexplainable human phenomena through the observation of tiny atoms and subatomic particles. What scientists have begun to understand is what people have known all along. The power of net love is built into our human DNA, connecting everything to everywhere all the time. The strength and power of the net is nothing to shake a stick at, and it's not wise to underestimate the grand power of net love. Music functions as a powerful communication tool used by net love to fulfill global spiritual requests, both individually and collectively. As a function of net love, music is used as a device for the purposes of connection, communication, and healing across the planet. Over many centuries, we have assigned names to net love by calling it God, the Creator, El Shaddai, the Great Comforter, the Holy Spirit, Higher Consciousness, the Universe, and the gods of old and new. By some accounts, there are over 900 names for God. As far as the net is concerned, it doesn't really matter whether you believe in the teachings of the Church or have never stepped foot into a religious temple. The properties of net love work on your behalf regardless, and they work simply because you are deeply loved, precious, and uniquely important to the future of our collective human experience. And here's the kicker, the truly unbelievable thing. With all its power and infinite knowledge, net love cannot create music without us. It needs us, you and me, to participate in this global creative process. It needs the cooperation of capable songwriters, musicians, composers, and singers who have the willingness to send up a prayer, the eagerness to receive a spark of inspiration, and the courage to commit to the process of translating that spark into a final, completed, finished song. There is an unspoken agreement among most songwriters, an acknowledgement in our songwriting spirits that net love is the real answer to most everything. We say it in a million ways through the songs we write, especially when we are courageous enough to share our vulnerability so that others might learn from our mistakes. Through our work, we remind people all over the world that our human hearts are fragile, but our spirits are strong. Through our songs, we encourage others to love themselves more, surrender to good things, and be happy. As we search for love in ourselves, and as we build messages in our music, it's no wonder that love ranks as one of the most repeated themes addressed by songwriters since the beginning of time. Songwriters have a job to do. First, we have to trust that net love knows what it is doing even when we are not sure. After all, this is the force that created the oceans and the Grand Canyon and a yellow butterfly, so second-guessing its creative strength is counterintuitive. Second, we have to strive to believe deep in our hearts that the spark of musical insight might be so important that it will benefit a higher calling of connection for ourselves and for other people we might never meet. Although we choose to stand firm in our belief of this idea, we must also embrace the mystery of not knowing the outcome because it's beyond our full comprehension. Third, we have to have a sense of trust that our impulse to write is important enough to keep going, despite frustration and uncertainty in the process. Armed with the knowledge that net love is working on our behalf in small and large ways, it becomes easier to take the first step, and then the second, and then the third as we move toward our dreams. First, love. I find that it is important to be clear about your song request. Clarity of intention ensures that you have authentic focus from beginning to end. The process of songwriting, despite your reason for doing it, will stretch and challenge you in every way. If you are not clear about the core reason for putting out the effort in the first place, the wind can fall out of your sails before you leave the shore. It is important to connect to your first love over and over again, asking yourself why music is so important to you and why you want to write that song. Why do you have the spark in your belly and the impulse to create a new song? You might want to write songs because it gets you out of the house on Wednesday nights, or you might want to write because you want to become a famous singer-songwriter one day. The number of variations and possibilities are infinite depending on your personal history, perspective, and desire. Here are some reasons why you might want to write music. 
for personal growth. I want to write because it feels natural to me. I want to write because I have something important to say. I want to write to show my family and friends that I can do it. I want to write because I know it's a gift and I feel like I need to use it. I want to write and sing so that I can perform next Christmas at my church. I want to write as a challenge for myself. I want to write to finally prove to my dad that I am worth something. You might want to write for professional success. I want to write to make more money doing what I love. I want to write to get as many likes on social media as I can. I want to write to be on TV and perform in front of millions. I want to write to win a Grammy or an Oscar. I want to write to travel around the world. I want to write to be the best guitar player in the world. Before you begin the journey of songwriting, become aware of your intention, your heart's desire, and the musical dreams bubbling inside of you. Most of us have been taught that prayer is a religious practice used for communication with God. We are told that if we close our eyes, place our palms together, drop to our knees, and look up for an answer, God will help to heal our hearts. But a prayer of intention can also be a quieter, more yearning reflection about something deeply important and meaningful to us. And sometimes there are no words to express its depth or scope of meaning. Prayer requests, whether overt or covert, automatically send a vibrational impulse away from our bodies to someplace else. The law of the universe is immediately prompted to fill our desires and answer our requests. What we send out comes back to us in ways that speak volumes about how much the universe is in love with us. The old saying, be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it, is a very real concept when big dreams are at play. Pray for your dreams and ask for the next turn on the road as you go. Send up a prayer frequently, hold steady to your first love, and gently put your foot to the pedal as you begin the ride. It's a lot like a tuna sandwich. In the beginning stages of writing a song, when you have a spark of an idea, there is no real way to tell whether your idea is a good one or a bad one. Sometimes you have the twinkling of an idea that you think might be workable, but for the most part, the only thing you can tell is how it feels in your gut, its emotional strength and potential expansion. It's a lot like a tuna sandwich. Let's imagine that it's lunchtime at work, and for days now you've been craving a tuna sandwich from your favorite deli down the street. Your feeling about having that specific delicious tuna sandwich is fairly strong, but perhaps not overwhelmingly so. Right now, close your eyes and take a moment to feel what a craving feels like. But then let's say, in contrast, that your best friend is sick and just got out of the hospital. She asks you to pick up her favorite tuna sandwich from a different awesome deli down the street. You adore your best friend and feel terrible about her recent dilemma, and so the need to deliver that tuna sandwich is at the top of your priority list. It certainly feels a whole lot stronger than your own personal tuna fish craving. So right now, take a moment to imagine the craving you have to help a friend in need. These two cravings are different in the feeling they give you. The one for your friend has a deeper sense of yearning attached, an internal pressure from the inside out that pushes you towards some sort of action and outcome. Strong song ideas resemble this outward pressure toward action. When you get a songwriting idea, and it feels good and strong and wonderful, run with it, like the tuna sandwich you have to get for your friend. Sometimes the spark of a strong idea triggers some personal story, some deeper connection, or some past memory. If so, then use the emotional energy of the experience you conjure up as a spark of expanded inspiration. The stronger the idea, the more likely you'll start, continue, and finish the process. There will be times when a song idea has very little emotional strength but has some intellectual interest attached to it. The turn of a phrase seems interesting. A song title is appealing. Or a particular theme provides some songwriting fodder to think about. Mildly titillating ideas are worth acknowledgement and further consideration. When you choose to work with a soft idea, it will tell you in short time whether it wants more songwriting attention from you. But stay working on an idea for as long as you can. The journey of the creative process yields amazing twists and turns even when you thought you had no more to give. 
It's also a good practice to pay attention to emotionally strong ideas that fly into your consciousness but don't seem to have any connection to what you are doing at the time. Remember that a song comes through you as much as it comes from you, and it requires the cooperation of both polarities of personal giftedness and heavenly inspiration. For example, it's a sunny day and you are shopping at the local thrift shop on a Saturday afternoon. While in the coat section, a hypnotic lyric on top of a sad melody pops into your head as you browse the coats on the rack. You step back to listen, pay attention, and observe, realizing that you've never heard this tune before. You start to hum the melody, now only vaguely aware of the large selection of coats in front of you. You instantly know that this song is about two people who have just broken up and are now packing up to leave their home. In your mind's eye, you see the rain on the pavement, the truck full of furniture, her red hair, and his blue jeans. You feel the scene as it plays out in your head with the heartbreak of both people taking center stage. If the spark of a song feels this complete with emotional depth, imagery, lyric, melody, and perhaps even rhythm and harmony all coming to you at the same time, this is considered a wonderful song emergency. By design, the potential for a great song is already there. All it needs is some attention, a little TLC, and some work. Grab your journal or phone or musical instrument as quickly as you can because song ideas are ephemeral and transitory. They can hit in their fullness and be gone within five minutes. If you fail to capture the seed of songwriting brilliance right away, don't fret, it will return. Simply ask Annette Love to resend you the same idea and wait for its return. I guarantee it will show up again. Captain. You are the captain of your own ship. Let's say that you have been asked to sail from Southern California to the Florida Keys. You do what every good captain does. You determine your nautical direction, hire the right people to help calibrate the ship's instruments, and then set the proper longitude and latitude on your instrument panel. You stock the ship with food, supplies, and emergency first aid kits, just in case. You prepare for any potential compromising situations, plan your day of arrival, say a few prayers, and break the champagne bottle on the hull of the ship. You are ready to set sail. Your artistic calling comes from a deep, sincere place and requires that you move from one atmosphere to another, much like that of the open ocean. Before launch, it is essential that you know the why of your vision as it exists for you now, not tomorrow or a year from now, but right now. You know that entering uncharted waters means that you are going to confront some things that you hadn't planned for, but because you've prepared for all foreseeable circumstances, you know that you are ready. Chart to your intention. How many songs do you want to write? One song, an EP, or a whole album's worth of brand new songs? Do you want to perform in an open mic or open on a big stage for another artist? With whom would you like to collaborate? How many days a week do you need to spend on your art so that you can meet your goal? Visualize what you want artistically and make a plan. If planning stresses you out, keep it light and easy. One or two steps will do. Do your best to think ahead before you get too deep out into open waters. Moving. Moving in a car, yielding to the road, hearing the crunch of gray asphalt as a rat-a-tat-tat bumps me around in my seat. The white lines paint a broken pattern that hypnotizes, prompting a new thought, a new lyric, or a new perspective. A flash of memory arises from no direction and from all directions at once. The song on the radio reaches into every metal corner of the interior and radiates upward, as if there is no roof and only a hollow gas pedal with no bottom. And I am taken away by the music. Calmness is in the sound chamber, with the radio fixated on a melody that gives me wings. My senses feel safe, loose, lovely, lucky, and lost. The radio songbird has wings and connects to another winged freedom bird in my brain and written on the sky. A higher flying one that feels the same but has blue wings, not brown. I sing the new blue bird song as it leaves puffs of air sailing behind it up and above me. Then I watch as a new thing appears. 
This is a poetic description of what it feels like to write a song in a moving vehicle. I wrote most of my first album in my car as I drove back and forth to work every day, and I found that the speed and cocoon-like feelings of the car's interior helped me to focus as I considered new musical ideas. I'm not alone. J.K. Rowling was sitting on a moving train when she thought up the idea of a little wizard boy named Harry. Singer-songwriter Peter Allen got stuck in an airplane circling around New York City when he wrote the lyric, When You Get Caught Up Between the Moon and New York City. Stephen King was asleep in an airplane when he got the idea for the novel Misery. A study on the creative thinking process conducted at Stanford University 2014 suggests that the simple act of taking a walk and moving the body enhances creative ideations in real time and shortly thereafter. Perhaps Steve Jobs knew this instinctively when he famously conducted his walking meetings while developing new and innovative technologies at Apple. In addition, most songwriters and creative types are what cognitive psychologists call divergent thinkers. Divergent thinking refers to a specific method and thinking process that a person engages in when attempting to tackle a problem. These out-of-the-box thinkers are able to bounce, shuffle, and sift through new possibilities with a natural sense of free-floating thought before arriving at a solution. They make great photographers, painters, organizational leaders, and choreographers. Convergent thinkers, on the other hand, take a more linear, traditional approach to problem solving by using a strategic step-by-step -step process. Consequently, convergent thinkers make great bookkeepers, executive assistants, and technical writers. But as we know, human beings can never be defined in a binary way and are always a mixture of many aptitudes. From the first inspirational spark, to the last note written, songwriters are naturally equipped to work a song divergently. When they need to connect with their convergent brains, there can be a halt, stop, and stutter as they struggle to organize concepts, recognize the need for structure, show up on time for a songwriting session, and discipline their writing practice. All creative projects require a blend of free-flowing, divergent thinking coupled with some amount of structure and organized process. This is part of the reason why so many songs are not finished. Divergent songwriter brains love the experience of new ideas, but they often lack the follow-through to finish and complete what they've started. Although prayer has summoned the spark to you, you will have to stoke the fire to help it expand and form. The very act of crafting a song from beginning to end provides an ongoing, gigantic, problem-solving quandary for most songwriters whether they tend to work divergently or in a linear step-by-step -step process. Before you get on that train to visit your friend in Cincinnati, set an intention for the ride. Do you need to figure out a nagging lyrical problem in the first verse of your new song? Do you wish to think about how best to tackle your dream of finishing an album's worth of new material? Pose a question, set an intention, and then move. Your already natural giftedness as a lifelong divergent thinker wants to thank you for letting it stretch its legs on that long train ride, road trip, bike ride to the beach, or midnight swim. But also take some time to visit your convergent thought process, make a soft plan, and write down your creative thoughts. You'll be well ahead of the game. A friend of mine has a theory that inspiration happens in fast-moving vehicles because perhaps our thoughts are flying at the speed of angels. I like that. The Strawberry and the Lion Once upon a time, there was a young woman who stumbled upon a group of vicious lions while she was walking through the wilderness. Desperate to save herself, she ran from the lions and got cornered at the edge of a high cliff. She climbed down a vine and dangled over the fatal precipice. As she looked below, she saw another group of lions growling up at her. Just above her, on the right, she saw a mouse gnawing away at the vine. To her left, she noticed a group of plump strawberries growing out of the side of the cliff. While holding onto the vine with her right hand, she plucked a strawberry with her left and popped it in her mouth. It was the most delicious strawberry she had ever tasted. Well, that's the stupidest story I ever heard, said my sister, a pediatric medical doctor and autism specialist. She's one of the smartest people I know. Well, why is that a stupid story, I asked. 
because the girl could easily have fed the strawberry to the mouse so that it would stop chewing on the vine, she explained. Honestly, I hadn't thought about that, and I hadn't. As my sister had suggested, I didn't think about how best to solve the problem, which is a good indication of my ineptitude at solving problems on the fly. Instead, I thought about how wonderful that strawberry must have tasted under the hopeless situation in which the heroine found herself. The point, it seemed to me, was about choosing to step into the fullness of a blissful moment even when the circumstances dictated otherwise, which is the typical knee-jerk reaction any artist has when confronted with a difficult situation. Find bliss first and deal with practical matters second. The Strawberry and the Lion is one of many Zen Buddhist cone stories that are meant to encourage the reader to consider something deeper than mere intellect and reason. The effort it takes to solve an unsolvable cone challenge unlocks larger questions, leaving the mind open to considerations on an intuitive level. I used to wonder how people lived without the ability to escape to a place where beauty was felt for beauty's sake alone, where nothing else mattered and acceptance and freedom were everything. So many people all over the world are hurting and feel lost, having never had the opportunity to feel something grander in their lives. Music connects us to something greater and capable and important, even though the practicality of it doesn't make sense to most people. Choosing to retreat into the present moment is something artists understand very well. When songwriters write songs or musicians play or singers sing, they are in a blissful state of suspended animation full of wonder and possibilities. This is a musician's sweet spot, our haven, thank God. We love to be in this spiritual space every chance we get because it feels so good. Although the world might tell you otherwise, you know the power of the music that is inside of you. There is an expanding body of literature in the psychological community that refers to the concept of being conscious in the present moment. It's called mindfulness. Achieving a state of mindfulness occurs when a person completely mentally and emotionally focuses on the present moment, using the power of observation as a catalyst. When you practice mindfulness, you will quickly notice the feeling of an expanded sense of peace, calm, physical relaxation, and love. This is the place where creativity lives. Even if you naturally find yourself in that creative space more often than others, It's a good idea to create a mindfulness practice that helps you tap back in on days when the spark seems to be dimming. Step into mindfulness, remember the beauty of living, and notice the arrival of new ideas. Crazy Brave Step 1, Spark, Song Food. Spiritual theme of this chapter. Music is a powerful expression of love. It serves as a communication device and is used for the primary purpose of healing and connection. Set your spiritual intention and prepare for the journey of partnering with spirit to create something beautiful, healing, and significant. Your takeaway. Trust that net love is always working on your behalf. Although prayer has summoned the spark to you, you will have to stoke the fire to help it expand and form. If you ask for anything in prayer, the universe will respond with a spark of inspiration simply because it loves you. Pay attention to your emotional center. It has a voice that is yearning to be heard. Practice mindfulness. Being spiritually present in this moment creates an open space for new ideas to enter. Crazy Brave Action. This exercise is called Open Space. Choose one area of your environment to unclutter, a closet, your garage, or that nagging corner in your bedroom. Clear it out and then give items to friends or take them to a local thrift store. 